Nash here. I've reached basement level three. I really wish these dreams were a little bit more revealing into the history of Ash. Like, reaching basement level three is interesting, but the weird radio dude, not so much so. Unless that was actually really, really useful and important, I, I don't know. Same time, if it's your first game ever made, it probably won't be that good, but at least it's start, a uh, start. You would not believe how many developers I've seen do that, and I always think it's, a, well, okay. There are tons of developers that seem to try and make, like, some weird masterpiece right right from the outset. And that actually bothers me a little bit. You know, this at least came from a studio that knew how to manage itself. I'm not entirely sure if this game uh, will do that well for them. I think it did okay. Reviews-wise, it's still kind of middling. Uh, let's see. get in here this time. How do I get to that? Unless I'm supposed to, like, climb over it? Ugh. Oh. I guess I can just stick my arm through the wall and grab the singular pristine wood that was in there. That's weirdly disappointing. Um, but yeah, I've seen a lot of developers make their first game ever, you know, limited practice outside of, you know, maybe like a mobile game or two, and they go like absolutely nuts to make a game, and it flops. Like, I guess you kind of, no matter what, if you're making a game, you pretty much have that risk, and I don't think most studios are flop-proof. Even AAA has been, you know very obvious that if your game isn't good enough, you might just shut down. I mean, easy easy example would be like Visceral Games. They made they made the uh, Dead Space games, which were fantastic, but you know, even Dead Space 1, 2, and 3 didn't save them from getting shut down. But I think they also got stuck in uh, I think they got stuck in development hell on some Star Wars game, and then EA also tends to just like eat companies for no good no good reason. Okay, I was gonna go check these things out. But like, at least this feels like a game that was kind of made with moderation. It might not... Moderation? Uh, I don't know if they overextended themselves on this one. I don't think so, but that might not be... Huh. Can I go this way? Somebody had said this was blocked off, but they might be wrong. Oh yeah, it says the prairie. I'm gonna leave that alone for a little bit. We'll come back later. I, I'm still trying to clear out the first uh, valley first. But like, it doesn't feel like they broke the uh, broke their bank account just to make this game. And I could be quite wrong on that one, and they could actually, you know. This could be one of those, like, make-or-break things. But I know, like, Telltale Games, for example, very successful studio, made a bunch of unwise financial decisions. Folded. Like, what, what were you doing? You were actually doing all right. But because... You have... Oh, it's up there. Uh, because you had no, no idea how to actually, like, save, I guess. You were just, like, on the verge of bankruptcy forever. I mean, for starters, move out, move out, move out of San Francisco. That's, that's the obvious one. Hello. Ammo. But yeah, I've seen a lot of like promising indie developers uh, go all in on some like new game that might not immediately be marketable, or they're like trying to capitalize on something. Uh, and so they put, like, way too much money and time into a project that might not be market viable. And then they get really sad about it for a while. And, like, I'll watch them be sad about it for a while on Twitter. And I feel bad about it, because, like, there's some there's some great ideas that get lost because the developers went all in in a bad way. And that sucks. I'm just rambling right now. There's not much to talk about in the game. I'm mostly just... Yeah, wandering around grabbing stuff forever. It's 
it's not bad. It's kind of compelling because I'm exploring. I wish there was more. How would I describe it? I was learning more as I went along, or my inventory size was bigger. Like, if these things stacked more. God, just a mod that made it so resources would stack past, like, three would be nice, actually. It would certainly improve the game game feel for me, but would probably also speed it up faster than the developers wants. Okay, well, let's... Nope, oh, hi. That is some pop-in. He was not there a moment ago. No! Dude, that one just went down to the right time. Right time, the right uh, speed, right amount of hits. Wanderers wandering. As is, I mean, it's my job. I think we can actually just fight the Ripper here. Bango. And yeah, more fragments of force spread around. I think so, yeah. Environmental storytelling makes a massive difference in games like these. You know, I rather enjoyed the bits of lore wandering around Bioshock. And admittedly, Bioshock had a little bit more going for it just in general. I don't know why. God damn it. Sometimes when I'm like pulling the sword out, he'll just kind of like awkwardly march around. And I'm like trying to pull the bow out so I can shoot the guy and he just pulled the sword back out again. I might have pressed the wrong button. I'm pretty sure I didn't. I probably did. Ash commentating about stuff would be nice. Yeah. Uh. What games did it really well? I... Master Chief and Cortana, I think, is the first game that I ever played where you could be absolutely alone, nobody else to talk to, and it felt like you were learning about the area. There was a sense of not just discovery of the new, new location, but like an actual partial understanding of it as you went along. And quite a lot of games do that. Okay, we have Discouraging Ca Casper for that. We do and we don't. Discouraging Casper tells us about stuff. Feels like there's a boss in here. But Discouraging Casper doesn't actually, like, tell us anything useful. He is just a Debbie Downer. And that's all he does. He, he is just there to, to make us feel bad about ourselves, I guess. I'm just gonna head back, I think. We had that bridge over there, because my inventory is full. I should probably go back. Uh, let's see, Halo Master Chief Collection was such a good series, so is Reach. I am really looking forward to them coming out on... on Steam, actually. I don't know if... I don't think they have a release date for it yet, but as soon as they do, either Shell and I or Shell Moose Joe and I will go on, like, some kind of crazy Halo co-op run. I, I don't know. But yeah, I, I think what would actually be really nice is if this game... I, I was talking about this during the one episode I didn't stream. Um, but, like... I think it would have actually been really successful if every time you came to new lo new location, you know, it was maybe closer to what Fallout does, where every location is kind of a distinct zone, like Sunshine Farms or... Or is it Sunshine... Hiding Sun... Ah, shoot. I don't remember. It's been a while since I did Fallout anything like that. But, you know, if you walked into a location and... It was kind of a back and forth between Ash, the character we're playing, and and Casper, the, the depressing ghost. Uh, you know, talking about the location. Maybe Ash knows about it or heard about it or comments on, you know, what it might have been or what it actually was because potentially he's from the area. Who knows? 
And then the ghost would kind of rebut more or less being like, yeah, but this is why it was terrible. You know, he might even, he might even reveal what was going on that made the place so, so shitty and unforgivable or something like that. And he's constantly trying to convince, you know, Ash here that, yeah, this place is not worth saving. Yeah, Sunshine Tidings Co-op, that's the one. It's been a while. Um, and, you know, I don't even need, like, that particularly interesting of lore. I just need some connection to the environment so that it's not just, like, this this tower on a hill. Because, like, this is an observatory. Actually, it's a double observatory, which makes no goddamn sense. You would not have two of those next to each other. But, like, I think it would have been much more successful if they actually had, like, a number of, like, underground facilities that we were going into. And maybe we will. Uh, but, like, to give us the opportunity to learn more and see the characters interact as opposed to just wandering around in largely abject silence, listening to the occasional, like, dreary thing from Casper the Depressing Ghost. Like, how to describe it? I love games where, you know, the voice actor might be amateur, but... Like, where they take an amateur voice actor that doesn't probably doesn't cost as much to hire and stuff like that. As you said, you are in the first valley. Yep. See, that, that little response there, that would have been actually a, a really good thing for him to say in response to me, like, maybe seeing a vision of what, what had been or something like that. And he's like, you know, stop trying to remember the good old days or the potential of what could be. It's gone, get over it. And so on and so forth. Look up WM Keck Observatory, double observatory. Huh. Well, I stand corrected. I guess I should probably turn on loot vision because there's actually quite a lot of stuff that I have not picked up along here. Yeah. You missed me. That's yeah, not waste arrows, but I don't need them. Oh, did I get health back just by resting? Well, that's kind of nice. I don't know a whole lot about observatories, so I guess I'll, I, I will refrain from critiquing observatories in the future. Uh. Can I get up there? There's a couple of... Oops. Can I get up this hill? The answer is kind of, sort of. But yeah, I, I think this game might have been more interesting to some degree if, like, we had maybe more open space, but, like, some kind of dungeon-y things that you would go into that had more interesting loot in them. Blueprints, characters, and whatnot, instead of just the procedurally generated, uh... God, yeah, I'm more or less just arguing for Ashen again, but with more survival s segments. talking about it. I mean, like, I realized that it would be more depressing, but at the same time, it'd also be interesting to hear, like, Ash, you know, struggling with it, you know, like, saying, like, shut up, shut up, I don't want to, I don't want to hear about it, or, you know, calling him out on it, being like, why? Or, you know, what good did it do you? Or just a whole bunch of things. Are they planning on updating Ashen? I don't think so. I know it'll be coming out on Steam at some point, but I don't think they're actually going to do anything more with Ashen. Now, it doesn't look like it's in, a, in assault mode. It is directly above us, though. 
Yeah, there's that thing right there. I still have to check that out. This is dumb. I'm not even sure what that hit. I can't honestly tell. I think it is, it is going for me. So whatever that is, is actually further out. Because, yeah, I've been seeing that marked for ages. Maybe it's on the other side of this tunnel. Probably not. Actually, if I remember right, this tunnel was a direct dead end. Yeah, there's nothing over there. I guess we'll just go back again. Unless it just stops. No, it didn't just stop. I'm gonna chop down one of these trees. Cause like, the car storm, the junk storm is kind of annoying, but it's not like, not actually holding me back that much, I just can't stand still. And then it pretty much just never hits me. But yeah, I don't know. I guess it just feels like this is one of those games that would be... ...benefited by just, like, having two characters talking to each other constantly. Just as a means of... Is that a... Is that a second one? Can I get back up? I think so. If I go this way? Looks like it. I really desperately need that backpack. Why don't we... Do we teleport back to town? We could. I just... I don't know. I should probably work on some amount of base building. I guess since I can teleport in and out, it's not that big of a deal. I guess the other thing that would actually work really well, instead of just having Casper the Depressing Ghost trying to just, like, uh, tell you bleak things, if there's actually a reason to bring along, like, uh, allies and more or less be like, Yo, Gina, follow me around. Tell me about things. Talk to me about your life. Because so far, like... I think you only learn about them if your if their trust goes up, and I'm assuming trust just goes up kind of automatically. I'm gonna take two and then rest. Cause it'd be kind of fun if uh if you could bring different characters along and be like, you know, just talk to me as we go. And you know, maybe each character has an hour or two of just direct dialogue of two characters just sitting there having a conversation as they explore the world. And I'm not sure how many uh, supporting characters you actually have in this game, but... You know, if, if you have, like, a, a small... A small number. I mean, honestly, if each character had an hour, and say you maybe have, like, ten characters, that amounts to about ten hours of just, like... Kind of passive content, I guess, would be the word I'd use. Nope. God damn it. I've done this repeatedly. Luckily, I screwed up in an okay location. But still. It has co-ops, also companions and co-op. Yeah, but do they talk that much? Have you played Heaven's Vault? You're describing that extremely well. I... 
So, I had a really bad migraine, and so I actually asked Shell to play it for me. And she's kind of sort of been in the process of editing that. And at this point, like, I kind of would prefer her to finish it up. Maybe? Maybe not. So I haven't actually pl played it yet. But it does seem like something that I would have enjoyed. I just... I was feeling so sick that day that I was just like, shall you do it? And now it's kind of like, well, we could have her start over. I could play it on my own, or like we could start over and play it together. I don't know. That's why we usually do everything together, but sometimes it's a little harder to do so. But yeah, on the topic of like the environmental dialogue and stuff, I actually wish that was something that the Bioware games did more often. I always hated the long, like, hey, let's go back to the, uh, uh let's go back to the ship and, and chat about our feelings for a while. And, and, like, it was nice. It was nice content, and I appreciated the fact that, you know, you really got to learn quite a lot about the different characters. But I felt like a lot of that could have also been spaced out in some of the more, like, open areas like hey by the way we're just kind of driving around in the mako for a while let's have a long chat about why uh why grunts uh you know why grunt anything or rex's issues as as like you know a, a de facto i i don't actually remember if rex became the leader of the krogan or was kind of like the runaway leader of the krogan it's been a while since I've played any Mass Effect games. I tried playing a whole bunch of Andromeda, but I just, I couldn't get into it. I tried. Let's see, what game were we talking about? Just anything. There's a lot of space to fill as I wander around, so I'm turning this into a de facto podcast on game design. On how to tackle some of the uh, inherent issues that I've got here. Okay. Ugh. Inventory's already full. Alright, let's go back. I don't think I'm gonna come back for the tainted wood anywhere. Was your face tired? My face is actually kind of tired. I've been recording a lot lately. For... I mean, it's actually been quite nice. It means my backlog is nice and beefy. Which means I get to go to the zoo in a couple of days. Uh, which I'm kind of excited for. Okay, it de does depending on the choices you make. He became the leaders of the Krogan because he was both farming and strong. Okay. Right, he becomes... I don't know, it, it's been a while. I don't remember the exact, like, path. But... I wish more games would do that and, like, just had kind of this running commentary. I'm trying to think of games other than, like, Halo and whatnot, where you actually do have, like, long scripted conversations with your allies while you're just out in the field. Actually, no, that's... that's... that's it, actually. There was a game I played rather recently that did that really well. Uh, actually, quite a number of games. Uh, kind of, sort of, we've been playing... I was playing Days Gone. That had a lot of things where you're on the phone with, like, um, Boozer. And you'd be having long conversations about stuff. And I thought that was well handled. Uh, no, Half-Life 2. You learn jack shit about anybody in Half-Life 2. You had to re read the book to even figure out why... Why the aliens even took over... Uh, anything, really. Borderlands does it well. I don't know about Borderlands. I So Borderlands has a lot of character development and character dialogue. But you never actually hear any of the characters to do, uh... You, you never actually hear any of the characters that you're playing as say a goddamn thing, for the most part. Uh, but no, the, the most recent God of War is actually the perfect example of character dialogue while you're wandering around. With characters that are actually directly there with you. And I realize that, like, that's a little bit unfair, because it's a scripted thing, but... The conversations between... Kratos, Boy, Dad Boy, and... Uh, disembodied head were 
an absolute joy? There's a book. Yeah, there was a book for Halo. Or not Halo, Half-Life. That more or less, like, bridges the gaps and stuff. Uh, but... God of War's, like, character dialogue, when you're just sitting there and listening to them having conversations, like... I... I didn't give a dang about God of War 1 through 3 plus uh, Ghost of Sparta. Like, they just didn't sound good. Mimir, there we go. I mean, honestly, uh, Dad, Boy, and Head works better for me because it's... <laughs> it boils it down pretty well. And there's also a whole slew of Halo books, and I've read most of them. They're really good. Yeah, we're absolutely, absolutely going to get a proper sequel to the most recent God of War, for sure. It, it's, I think it was one of the most successful games of last year. And for good reason, too. It was really good. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't give a rat's ass about the previous God of War games. They seemed kind of fun, but there's nothing about them that, like, made me care about them. Whereas, like, I legitimately care about what's going to happen in God of War 2? I don't know how they're going to title things, to be totally honest. Let's see, don't the Halo books say that the suit jacks off Master Chief in combat? No. I... no. What? That's a really weird... I've read every book and like... No. Let me find the section of the book. If you can find that, go for it. But I'm pretty sure that would never make it into the lore. Because like, what kind of insane nonsense would that be? That, ugh. I mean, that would add an interesting layer to Master Chief and Cortana's relationship. But, I'm not sure that's a layer I want at all. Said your followers, what followers? I've got a daughter and some lady named Gina that I picked up and I've not spoken to since. I heard something make a noise, but I don't see it. Oh, there you are. Hello. Ow. He actually hit me. Charlie bit me. Ripper hit me. Oh, that was quick. Okay. So we're here. Uh... Frustratingly, my inventory is already full. Admittedly, it's because I harvested a deer, but like... Man, I really wish the tainted remains would stack in your backpack better or something. But no, the quote you're thinking about was fake. Yeah, as it should be. That would, as goofy as that is, or no, as like inconsequential as that would seem, a detail like the Mjolnir armor uh, jacking off Master Chief in combat. Why am I even having this conversation? Why is this even a thing in question? I don't know. Um. But, like, a detail like that would absolutely just, like, demolish a fan base if done poorly or if, like, people caught on to it. Like, I'm not kidding. Uh, there's a, well, I guess not exactly a video game, but there's a politician a while back who, for all rights and purposes, actually was doing fairly well. But during a campaign rally, he just let out this, like, dumb whoop. Slash yell. I, I don't remember what his name was, what party he was with. I, I know nothing about the guy. All I know is that he, like, 
yelled weirdly because he was so he was so like jazzed about his own campaign and yeah more or less it like kind of slowly destroyed it and I, I think I think he like more or less never won another election Whoa, everything gets Snow White here. Like, I'm sure he still had political followers, but, like, his campaign died that day with that rally right there. If he had not whooped, he might have actually had a chance at, at getting pretty big. But, nope. I mean, I could be wrong. I could be giving the guy too much credit, but he sunk himself with one noise. And I know J.K. Rowling... Uh, has definitely been saying some bizarre nonsense to the point where, yeah, I actually can't look at the Harry Potter universe as as lovingly anymore. Uh, not that I was ever a particularly big Harry Potter fan, but the fact that J.K. Rowling has like been just tweeting random shit about how Harry Potter works lately, uh, like how the universe works, is just dumb. Uh, so, for example, okay. Gandalf, uh, Gandalf, well, Gandalf being gay, no, Dumbledore being gay for Grindelwald, like, okay, that was kind of implied in the books, that's fine, but, like, have some cojones in, and include that from the get-go, don't just, like, have that as a weird background detail and make everybody, like, kind of mad, you put that in there or something. Oh, there is a third observatory down here. And I didn't, I didn't check it out. But so, so she'll just tweet random garbage about Howard Dean. That was the, that was the politician. Okay. Uh, but so, so she tweeted about Dumbledore being gay, which is like, okay, that's, that's fine. That makes sense. It didn't really need to be stated. Leave that for the fan theories, but okay. But the, uh... The other things she's been tweeting are like how before before uh, like muggles really had much for plumbing. I think even like rather early on or rather late later on like eff effectively Hogwarts didn't have plumbing for ages and uh, they event eventually just stole how plung plunging plumbing works from muggles. Uh, but uh, before that, they would just shit where they were and then just magically disappear the poop. And, like, that is a detail I did not need to learn about the Harry Potter universe. And because it came from the author's mouth, or, well, fingers, or official Twitter, like, I actually can't really look at ha Hogwarts uh, that, like, the same way. Which is a shame, because, like, I gave a lot more, I, I cared a lot more about, like, Hogwarts as a location than I cared about Harry Potter or anything that he was ever wrapped up in. Which is always a shame because they got pretty focused on the characters and very much less on the everything else. Okay, did I? Yeah, I've already hunted that deer. I'm just gonna hit up this nest and then we're gonna go get the stronghold. I'm getting bored. Hogwarts is more of a shitty place now. Yup. It lost a little bit of the magic. But, you know, I think the other thing is. The reason why I don't care so much for the combat in this game, the dodge roll is just so bad. It's not fun. The yeah, location was what I was interested in. Yeah, like I am, I am legitimately still waiting for for the day where we get a a proper like magic school story that like doesn't lose sight of itself over the course of seven books. Like, that's never really going to happen. They're always going to just, like, get wrapped up in whatever plot. Well, 
like the world building in the early in the early Harry Potter books were it was really solid. Like you learned a lot about things and it was cool. And then like the later four books had like four had some, five also had some, and then like six and seven were just like fighting Voldemort and stuff. It got less cool. Also, a lot of snogging. Oh. Okay, sorry. Mildly focused. These guys suck. Maybe once I have some better armor or something, but as it stands. Oh, he's dead. Alright, well that's easier. He's still making noises like he's still alive, but... Oh well. But yeah, I got, I got real sick of the, uh... Sick of all of the, like, weird in interpersonal drama that started, like, to really take hold of the, uh, Harry Potter books. And, I don't know. It just didn't feel as good by the end of the series. It was still a relatively satisfying conclusion compared to a lot, but it was still like, eh. Oh, did my bow disappear in the middle of that combat? I was not paying that much attention. Let's see. It's a long way to go here. We're going for two hours. I We did get one stronghold down. It's not so bad. Go cut down. I'm just gonna cut down the tree. I'll I'll come pick it up later. So, am I enjoying this game? It's Zen. I I'm not sure if I'm directly enjoying the the process of just wandering around gathering all of these nodes. got a shelter over here but yeah I'm enjoying this game more because it's kind of a Zen resource hunt than I'm actually enjoying the the direct gameplay I think it would have been better if especially for like a lot of these you could just mark locations and your your followers would come out and grab the resources for you and you're more of kind of just like a, a leader than anything else Two hours. Death is a long Probably make a little bit of food. I'm getting peckish. Okay. But no, I am enjoying it. I'm trying to remember what game this reminds me of. Because it was another game that had Listen, very heavy. We have to leave now. We're too close to the Jeepa facility. Whatever happens will be far worse here than anywhere else on the entire planet. Yeah, see, that's the details I want to hear way more about. I mean, admittedly, you know, the point is, oh. Blizzard is uh, not done. Let's just drop the remaining. We'll just drop the remaining stuff. Oh, there goes the blizzard. Oh, that'll be fine. 
pretty sure I still had some food sitting around. Yeah, there we go. We're good. Anything from that? I still don't know what that weird strip-looking thing is. Might hurt him a bit. Let's see if I can descend semi safely. All right, we're good. But because you're pretty much going to need every resource just to keep your people from like starving or whatever, like it sucks a little bit because I'm effectively I'm effectively forced to go grab all of these resources and then like kind of come to and from. Just to drop it all off, and it feels like I'm on... It's an errand simulator, currently. And... So if I had... If I had to do significantly... Actually, you know what? This game is the, uh... This game is the thing I will always point to in the future. Whenever anybody gives me shit about maxing out my, my inventory space... In a, uh... In a survival game or an RPG, this is the game I'm going to point to and be like, "This is this is why I always just max it out." Because if I didn't have to worry about my inventory space at all and I could just like wander around exploring and grabbing stuff, we would have been done with this entire segment in like half an hour, easily, maybe. I mean, gotta account a little bit for the blizzards and stuff, but the problem is the mechanics in the game are set in such a way that like there. Are, the environment is only a threat to you if you're if you're being too risky or you like just ignore it. Most of the time it's it's just there. And they're like, "Oh, blizzard's coming. Guess I better go find like a place to stay warm for a little while." I think with enough people in the right buildings your outpost can be self-sustaining. No, you actually run out of resources after a while. It'd be lovely if if this was actually one of those where, you, yeah, you could make it self-sustaining. But I was going to go back and uh, have her craft a, a, a better building. Oh, well. 